Independent celebrations officially opened over the weekend. Agro-processors get training in roots and tubers packaging. Thank you for joining us on National Focus. I'm Kimani Saint-Jean. And I'm Mervyn Matthew. Stay with us for details of these and other stories after this. Yell and tell if someone tries to abuse you. Tell until someone believes you and they do something about it. For more information on child abuse or to report suspected cases on child abuse, contact the Social Welfare Division on 33 Great Marlborough Street or call 266-3020 or 266-3080. Thank you for staying with us. The Commonwealth of Dominica and 30 other countries have given formal consent to the Paris Climate Change Agreement. This took place during the 71st United Nations General Assembly, which commenced on September 13th at the United Nations headquarters in New York. The government of Dominica was being represented by Honorable Minister for Foreign Affairs and CARICOM, Senator Francine Baron. This brings the number of countries that have ratified the Paris Agreement to 61, reaching one requirement for the coming into force of the agreement. The agreement will come into force when the total number of countries that have ratified the convention accounts for 55% of global greenhouse gas emissions. Currently, the number of parties which have ratified the agreement accounts for only 47% of global emissions. The Paris Agreement was adopted by 195 countries at the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change Conference of Parties, or COP21, which was held in Paris last December. The agreement calls on nations that have ratified to pursue their highest possible ambition to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. The overall goal of the Paris Agreement is for countries to take action to keep global temperature rise below 2 degrees Celsius this century. This, deci this decision is critical for the economic and physical survival of small island developing states since rising global temperatures mean rising sea levels. The Climate Change Agreement is the first global universally binding agreement of this nature. It features an action plan to which developed countries have committed. The first five-step plan is to 1. Reduce greenhouse gas emissions to be transparent and accountable and to check the progress every five years. Three, have developed countries provide support for seeds adaptation strategies. Four, avert and address loss and damage due to climate change. And five, have developed countries pledge to continue supporting and building resilience in developing countries. U.S. $100 billion will be raised annually for that cause until 2025 when a new goal will be set. Honorable Minister Francine Baron is encouraged by the strong commitments made by the countries that have ratified the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. She says the demonstrations by the United States and China, the biggest greenhouse gas emitters, give hope that the world is on a path to achieving the ambitions set in the agreement. The next critical step, she says, is to ensure that financing is predictable and accessible to small island developing states like Dominica to build resilience and to adapt to the impact of climate change. The Honorable Minister for Agriculture, Johnson Drago, is confident that the banana industry is on a clear path to success following the importation of banana plantlets from France in April 2015. At a recent interview on Focus on Government and Development, Honorable Drago reported that the first harvest was satisfactory. We saw good results from, from, from these this plants and a number of of a lot of exports and we were able to supply the, the local market. As a matter of fact, you can get the banana in Dominica every day today. And there was a time when there was actually a shortage of, of bananas on the island. And you can get a bunch of banana almost at any time um, um, in Dominica right now. The Honorable Agriculture Minister says a larger quantity and better quality crop from the followers of this first harvest is expected this November. 
He further informed that the first harvest from the second set of plantlets distributed will also come this November. Later this year, it is expected that eight to 10,000 boxes of bananas will be available for weekly for regional export and local consumption. With all this good news, the agriculture minister says, however, that quality and the black cigatooka disease remain a concern for the industry. The Ministry of Agriculture is therefore working assiduously with farmers to tackle these issues head on. We are working with our farmers um, to be more consistent and rigid in the approach towards towards this the the um the, the subsector and so that we could get the quality that we need because we must have a consistently good quality banana. Farmers can purchase oil and fertilizer at a reduced price and the ministry is also making available ribbons and sleeves. The agriculture ministry has also purchased 12 mist blowers for the banana company measures program to assist farmers to manage the black cigatooka disease. Honorable Drago further encouraged farmers to deal regularly and to consistently engage in activities that will assist in curbing the spread of black cigatooka. Honorable Drago pointed out that his ministry's overall objective is to produce enough high-quality banana in order to get back on the European market. He explained that the impending increase of the supply of bananas in Dominica will be too much for regional export and local consumption. Part of the process of getting back on the European market includes recertification of all farmers. The agriculture minister says his ministry is working towards that and is also engaged in other activities to meet this objective. We are giving the farmers reborn. Um, they, we have a, a banana unit within the ministry that will soon be ratified by cabinet, but persons have already been employed and are working within the unit. We have our monitoring officers out there in the field. Um, we employed a set of monitoring officers to, to complement the, 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 the work being done in the field and to, uh, to assist our farmers um, within the, the, the banana sector. And um, hopefully very, we will eventually get back on the urban market. The ministry is also working with Rinfresh. Rinfresh is working with the Ministry of Agriculture. Rinfresh is currently trying to develop a program to establish well about approximately 100 acres of bananas in Dominica as we speak to assist Rinfresh in meeting its quota for the um, European market. And um, Rinfresh intends to um, operate on the specific guidelines and it will assist or other farmers to meet the um, the requirement for getting back onto the European market. You are watching National Focus more when we return. Let's have some fun, eh? I'm not ready for your kind of fun yet. But everybody else is doing it. But I'm not everybody else. I'm me, and I want to do well in school. Well, you definitely get an A for attitude. I plan to get an A in life, and then I think of your kind of fun. So what am I to do in the meantime? You'll survive. Say no when you're not ready. Use condoms when you are. Welcome back. Dominica's Export Import Agency hopes that a two-day workshop for agro-processors will improve their packaging capabilities to allow them to be export-ready. A two-day workshop began on Monday entitled Strengthening the Capacity of Agro-Processors, Farmers, Exporters on Processing and Packaging Technology Specific to the Operations, Emphasis on Roots and Tubers. It is the implementation phase of the Caribbean Action Agriculture Policy Program focused within the Caribbean and the Pacific. The program is executed through a contribution agreement signed between the European Union and the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture, AICA, in collaboration of the Caribbean Agricultural Research and Development Institute, CADI, funded under the 10th European Development Fund. AICA representative Kent Coppel told GIS News what they hope will be the outcome of that workshop. What we expect, number one, is 
that the agro processors are more aware of the available technology as it relates to packaging of their particular product. We know that agro processors here may utilize whatever they can get locally or whatever they may see being used by their, their colleagues. However, we need to ensure that they are aware of the kind of packaging technology that suits their product and most importantly the market that they are targeting. Coppel stated that AICA is working closely with the Dominica Bureau of Standards to highlight certain information that agro-processors need to be made aware of. The main objective of the workshop will be to identify and recommend suitable packaging material for agro-products, to coach agro-processors on food processing methods and product development reroutes and tubers, to identify basic equipment and materials to assist in the peeling, slicing and packaging of dashing and other tubers, and to improve the skills and the knowledge of packaging house operators, exporters and technicians. The facilitator of the workshop shared what he will be teaching the participants over the two-day period. We're hoping that the, in terms of an education base, that they would learn, okay, so they're at one level and they need to move to another level because depending on how much processing and packaging that you do, the money that comes back in is that much more. We're going to be doing some hands-on training in terms of what is required in terms of the equipment and stuff like that and how it is used and what is right for depending on what level they're at. A lot of times you find that you have people who are doing things the same way over and over and the cost of production keeps increasing because cost of living is going up, the cost of doing everything is going up. If you replace some things with equipment, you can be more effective, more efficient and you can produce more. Therefore, you make more money. Ali believes that one of the problems experienced in the Caribbean is that although the resources are available, people are stuck in the old-fashioned way of doing things. He told GIS what he thinks government can do to facilitate the success of the agro-processors. There are some things that is beyond that which the people, in terms of the farmers or the producers, the agro-processors do. For instance, things like, for, like simple thing, travel in between. Very, very difficult. Um, freight going back and forth. So you, you, you have the best product. You have the best packaging, best facility, but you can't send your product out of Dominica because there's no boat to carry it out. This is not at the, the local level, this is at government level. So there are a lot of things actually, even things like the, like the export tariffs and stuff like that, um, getting things like certificates of origin, making, making it easier, possible tax holidays, things like that for, for manufacturers, a number of things actually that can be done at the governmental level. The workshop is expected to improve government policies and incentive schemes for smallholders, food security at national and local levels, and regional institutional capacity. Day two of the workshop will involve field exercises with the participants. In more news, Union des Parents des Eleves, Martinique, UPEM, of Martinique, made a donation of school supplies to the Ministry of Education on Friday. UPEM is a Martinique's Parents Teachers Association charged with the responsibility of ensuring that students have a conducive environment for learning which will assist them to excel academically. After the passage of Tropical Storm Erica, UPEM decided to assist Dominica by donating stationery and other supplies. This is in an effort to assist those who were affected by the storm. Mark Frampton is Honorary Consul for Martinique. This donation is going to go to the Ministry of Education and as you can see it is comprised of a number of different articles. Uh, we chose with UPEM this morning uh, the most significant ones that will give an idea of what is being given. They are comprised of uh, crayons, paper, staplers. Uh, it even goes as far as camping beds just in the case of the fact that some persons need to oversleep or they, go in, they uh, have programmed to go on a camp in a school. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Marcelo Powell, received the supplies on behalf of the Honorable Minister for Education, Peter St. Jean. She expressed her gratitude. We want to thank you here today for the presentation of school supplies to our children as you help us to work in the continued development of our children. As you return, we want you to thank your association and express our profound gratitude and appreciation for the supplies here today. 
The presentation was made by President of UPEM, Gerard Laguerre. Laguerre said he is looking forward to working closely with the Ministry of Education. He also believes that this is an opportunity to initiate an exchange program which will allow Dominican students to learn French and French students to learn English. This donation costs close to 20,000 euros. The association is working collaboratively with Express de Zille for the transportation of the supplies. <laughs> The Pebush community celebrated the Feast of St. Matthew last weekend. His Excellency President of Dominica Charles Savre and Mrs. Savre, the Honorable Prime Minister Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt, the Honorable Member of Parliament for the Pebush constituency Rosalind Paul and several other members of Cabinet joined in the celebratory Mass. Prime Minister Skerritt addressed the congregation and highlighted the need for the community to get involved in the work of the Catholic Church. Likewise, he told the congregation that everyone has a part to play in the nation's development. We can only get our country where we want it to if all of us play our part. For our school children, your part is to stay away from drugs and alcohol and to study and to do well and make yourself and your parents proud and make your community proud. And for we parents, we have to continue to provide leadership and guidance to our children. We live in a world with many more distractions, and it requires an increasing amount of attention to our children. And even those of us who do not have children, we have to be our neighbor's keeper. And the entire village, the entire community, the entire country must play a greater part in the upbringing of our children. He pledged the commitment of the Labour Party government to continue taking care of the less fortunate as a biblical duty. The church recognized the work of those who have been committed over the years. St. Matthew was one of the followers of Jesus Christ. Prior to becoming a disciple of Christ, he was a tax collector and is the patron saint of accountants. And over the weekend, the 2016 independent celebrations officially opened. The grand opening took place on Saturday at the Layu Beach.
Saturday's ceremony was attended by His Excellency President of Dominica, Charles Savre and Mrs. Savre, Speaker of the House of Assembly, Alex Boyd Knights, Parliamentary Representative for the St. Joseph Constituency, Kelva Daru, and other members of Parliament. Honorable Minister for National Security, Raymond Blackmore, represented Honorable Prime Minister, Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt, at the event. Today, opening as a word from our previous speakers, is a very significant event as it will set the stage for all the cultural activities that will take place in the various localities and districts of this beautiful country. It is indeed a great moment in our development as a people. A moment when the things that validate us as Dominicans are on display for the rest of the world to see. Or barely our country, the hosting of the World Curl Music Festival, the staging of Heritage Day. GIS will bring you more from Saturday's official opening in Tuesday's newscasts. And that's news coming up next, your tip of the day. We hear a lot of talk about climate change and the devastating effects carbon pollution is having on the planet. From devastating storms to food insecurity caused by altered weather patterns, there is no questioning that carbon pollution is leaving its toll on the planet. There is one tip we can all engage in to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Change your light bulbs. How often do you think about changing light bulbs? Chances are not very often. An easy fix you can make that will help the planet every day is to switch all of the lights in your house to compact fluorescent bulbs. One bulb can reduce up to 1,300 pounds of carbon dioxide pollution during its lifetime. If every household switched its bulbs, we could reduce the electricity spent on lighting by one half. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website news.gov.dm. Like our Facebook page, facebook.com slash gisnewsdominica and follow us on Twitter at gisdominica. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. Live streaming is available on our YouTube channel 24 hours a day. From all of us here on the GIS News production team, I'm Mervyn Matthew. And I'm Kimani Saint-Jean. Thanks for watching and join us again next time on National Focus. Mm -hmm.